Good morning and welcome to this, our Sunday, our third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait and watch, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we join together in the words of our confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 2. John, meanwhile, had been locked up in prison. When he got wind of what Jesus was doing, he sent his disciples to ask, Are you the one we've been expecting, or are we still waiting? Jesus told them, Go back and tell John what's going on. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the wretched of the earth learn that God is on their side. Is this what you were expecting? Then count yourselves most blessed. When John's disciples left to report, Jesus started talking to the crowd about John. What did you expect when you went out to see him in the wild? A weekend camper? Hardly. What then? A shake in silk pyjamas? Not in the wilderness? Not by a long shot? What then? A prophet. That's right, a prophet. Probably the best prophet you'll ever hear. He is the prophet that Malachi announced when he wrote, I'm sending my prophet ahead of you to make the road smooth for you. It isn't long now, just two whole weeks. 14 days, 336 hours, 20,160 minutes. Yes, you really want to know this, don't you? 1,209,600 seconds. Well, by now it's less than that and, and less minutes as well. But what is Advent all about this time, this season that we are in? There are some places that are very restricted on Advent being right up until Christmas Eve and then Christmas coming into its own the day before Christmas Day. However, it is hard to be on the outside of our society when Christmas begins in November, October, maybe for some even in September and finishes on the 1st of January when, of course, you can buy your Easter eggs. We should sing carols only from Christmas Eve right up until the 2nd of February. However, even I would struggle singing carols right to the end of January when the rest of the world has then moved on. So what should we do? Well, we could try and drag ourselves into what has been the traditional time scale of the time of year within the church calendar or we can go with the flow. Advent after all is about the arrival of a special person that's the meaning of the word. 
maybe we could start mid-September, mid-November, I mean, and have six candles. After all, Lent has six Sundays, so why not Advent? At that time, we might get a little more Advent spirit before Christmas celebrations kick in. Sometimes I think, though, that we have very much lost the real reason all this takes place. We argue over decorations going up too soon. The word Christmas for some mentioned before the beginning of December is a volatile word. The bigger picture we get here from John, checking out who Jesus was. I wonder how awesome it would have been if the two of them had got together. What a dynamic duo John and Jesus would have been. However, John asks his disciples to report back. And they did with the deeds that Jesus was doing. Go back and tell John what's going on. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the wretched of the earth learn that God is on their side. I think we cling to the traditions, to how we have always done that, rather than look at the actions of what we are doing and indeed have done. The big picture, after all, is to care for others. Do we really concentrate on how many candles and what do they mean? And are we saying the right prayer on the right Sunday as we light the one that we light? We need to concentrate more on preparing for the arrival of Jesus, the special person who has already come. Advent and Christmas remind us of that. It is to remind us of what we need to be doing all year round. One of my favourite Christmas prayers tells us what the true meaning of the birth of Jesus is and what we need to do to be people of faith. It is written by Howard Thurman. When the angels are stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, and when the shepherds have gone back to their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Amen. So let us pray. Make your ways known upon earth, Lord God your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our anger and sorrow and give peace to your church, peace to the nations of our world, and peace in our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.